For over 100 years, Avera St. Luke's Hospital has served the community of Aberdeen in eastern South Dakota. The east edition of the hospital, which was built in 1991, is served by air handlers in a central mechanical room. One of those air handlers serves the dialysis, endoscopy, outpatient services, and same-day surgery departments of the hospital. In summer months, the area is served by this air handler experienced excessive humidity. Moisture carryover from the cooling coil waterlogged the final filters and dripped into the supply ductwork. Corrosion attacked the ducts as a result of water pooling, and in some cases, water had damaged ceiling areas. According to Jeff Gorham, plant operations manager at the facility, these high summer humidity levels also interfered with basic maintenance operations, such as drying carpets after cleaning. Analysis indicated that this air handler was experiencing moisture carryover from the cooling coil due to its close proximity to the final filter bank and the face velocities being too high for this blow-through fan unit. Instead of trickling down into the drain pan, some of the condensate was being blown through the airstream, saturating the downstream final air filter, which further reduced the effectiveness of the air handler, increased humidity levels, and caused odors. A second concern was the reliance on a single belt-driven fan and motor for these critical patient service areas. With advice from Hunt Air, they decided to convert the air handler from a blow-through to a draw-through design and to replace the single fan with a four-unit fan wall array. This project would involve not only replacement of the fan, but also relocation of the heating and cooling coils within the air handler cabinet. Note how the two coils were to be relocated upstream in the airflow to make room for the new draw-through fan system. Smooth airflow from the fan wall array would eliminate moisture carry-through, and multiple fans would add much needed redundancy. Also, to get a better mix of outdoor air and return air to the unit, an air blender or air turbulator section was envisioned. The air handler of concern is on the right. Workers from various building trades began work on Friday evening. Pipe insulation, chilled water piping and condensate drain lines were removed. Electrical power and control wiring was disconnected. Air handler doors and door frames, as well as some of the wall panels and support struts were removed and will be reused. For a 16-year-old air handler, the components have held up well, which is a testament to Temtrol's welded frame construction. By Friday evening, the existing single plenum fan was disassembled. The 30 horsepower motor was removed and put into storage as backup for other air handlers. The fan wheel, fan shroud, and support structure were removed to be scrapped. Existing heating and cooling coils were disconnected. In converting the unit from a blow-through to a draw-through configuration, the coil section was moved to where the supply fan existed, and the supply fan section was moved to where the coil section once stood. Flooring and supports were installed over the condensate pan section to support the new fan wall section. By this time, the entire side of the air handler was open, allowing the team to begin installing the fan wall retrofit cells. Because of the manageable size of the individual fan wall units, they could be rolled into and through the building on a handcart, taken to the second floor on a standard elevator, and rolled right up to the worksite. One by one, the four cells were brought into the air handler and lifted into place to form a too wide by too high configuration. The units were simply bolted together to form a rigid fan array, and sound absorbing insulation was inserted around each cell. By 10 a.m. on Saturday morning, the old fan had been removed and the new fan wall array installed, and by noon, the electrical connections were completed. The entire fan section retrofit was completed in only eight hours. Meanwhile, work on relocating the coils and the drain pan was completed, and these were reconnected to chilled water and condensate drain piping. The sidewall struts on the air handler were re-welded, and in some cases relocated to simplify service access in the future. While the air handler's structure was being reassembled, electricians extended electrical service and control wiring to the units. The units themselves were pre-wired, simplifying this task. Electrical conduit was installed atop the air handler and dropped down to the four units. The amount of space required downstream and upstream of the fan wall cells 
is often dictated by what's necessary for service access. A new air blender section was added to the unit upstream of the coil bank to help mix the entering outdoor and return air streams before they enter the coil bank. The space needed for the air blender or air turbulator section was made possible due to the small footprint of the fan wall array. The final stages of the installation involved testing the water lines, electrical connections, and control circuits. The variable speed fan control was integrated with the building automation system. Motors in a fan wall array can run above 60 hertz, and the design point for this unit was 89 hertz. The restructured air handler was started up and tested while the worksite was cleaned up. By 6 p.m. on Sunday, the installation was complete and operating. By doing the work over a weekend, it was not necessary to interrupt hospital service or comfort to patients or employees. Fan wall technology, great for business, great for the environment. Consider upgrading now.